question with uh, it's a wheel of questions uh, I'm going to write it down on the chat so that you have an idea wheel of questions good and who wants to start I'm going to spin the wheel Describe your dream house. Who would like to start with that one? Describe your dream house. Who wants to start? Okay, Gerard. And then we can listen to Juan Jose. Okay. Okay, my dream house. First of all, I imagine that my dream house is in a good place, in a beautiful landscape, when I can admire the mountains, the nature. Also, my dream house is about this house that, that makes me that makes me relax. I'm talking about when I'm getting to the house and as I can feel in this emotion, emotion of getting relaxed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this, this kind of situation when, for instance, you're stressed and you're in your house and suddenly you start to feel great because of, for instance, the color inside in your house, the color of the walls, or for instance, you know, because you you're feeling a connection, a recognition with your house. That is my dream house, a house uh, that gets me relaxed. Okay. A house that makes you feel relaxed, yes? Okay. A place or a house that makes you feel relaxed. Yeah, it's very nice that you speak about the colors, like, it's interesting that uh, Juan Jose, do you want, well, thank you, Gerard, thank you so much. Juan Jose, do you want to answer the same question or do you want to spin the wheel and probably answer a different one? Um, yeah, I, I wish to respond this question. Okay. Um, I think that my uh, dream house is apartment in, in a city, a big city, yeah. I'm a city boy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I think that this house uh, was a mother house. Yeah. Okay. This is very important for me. And uh, in in the city was the central uh, house. The location of this house was central. I okay. think it's important. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, this is my dream house. I think. Yeah, you can say I I I'd like to to be okay. central location. Okay. Uh, or I it would be located. Oh, okay. Right in. And you can see in a central part of the city, yeah. Yes. Mm, and thank you so much, Juan Jose. Yeah, I think that probably I'm. I have always preferred cities. Now that I have lived in Bogota, um, I, I I do like the fact that that Bogota has um, these natural parks all over the city. Like you can definitely, or it's easy to find. A place where you can connect to nature, which is wonderful. <laughs> uh, that is something that I think it's beautiful in the city. Yeah. Uh, and thank you so much, you two. Uh, in terms of pronunciation, Gerard, you can say mountains and nature. Nature is not. Um, bueno, hay, hay unos sonidos del inglés que son. Hay que subir la lengua al paladar. Sí la punta de la lengua al paladar, y de ahí vienen muchos sonidos del inglés. Entonces, si yo ubico... Mmm, a ver, voy a poner la cámara un momento. 
para que ustedes se hagan una idea. Si yo ubico la punta de la lengua en el paladar superior y yo digo la T, yo digo... Right? El sonido va a cambiar. Lo mismo pasa con la D, ¿no? D, D. Y este Nate, este, la, la T de Nature es, es como si yo dijera la CH, de hecho el sonido de la CH en inglés, y aquí hay una diferencia en términos de pronunciación. La SH y la CH son diferentes en términos de sonido por la ubicación eh, de los músculos vocales, ¿cierto? Entonces la SH es mucho más suave, es shh, right? La CH sí es más, um, es, es más cerrada, ¿no? Entonces yo pongo la punta de la lengua en el paladar superior y digo, y hago el sonido de la H y va a cambiar. Es diferente decir sheet, right? Sheet, a decir eh, clip, right? Chip. It's a little bit different. Uh, it's not so easy to actually get like all of these differences, but if you practice a lot, uh, you will definitely get it. I think it's really important to go like to work on the sounds of the words. Like people say, like I would like to have a good pronunciation, or I want my pronunciation to get better. Yes. And when you think about it, you need to think about the sounds of the words, the sounds of the consonants, okay? So, for example, uh, in this case, we'll say nature, because it's not the T sound, just, but it's also the CH, like nature, okay? Uh, sorry that I can be... I can okay. be a little bit emphatic with pronunciation. It's not like you have to, right? No es como que tengan que hacerlo, pero sí suelo um, hacer las um, aclaraciones para las personas que sí les interese. En términos de comunicación, si no afecta, si el sonido no afecta a la comunicación, no hay lío, ¿sí? Pero si a veces sí afecta, es importante. <laughs> ok. Good. Wow, thank you, thank you for your feedback. I, mm -hmm. I'm deeply grateful because it's part of my improvement. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna practice this sound. Yes, it's it's kind of important to practice. Like, yeah. thank you. Okay, so let's go with the next yeah. one. Let's try to listen to. Um, We can listen to the same people or we can have different people answering the question. Uh, I would I would prefer if somebody else uh, gives herself or himself the chance to speak. So the question here is what food would you choose for your last meal? It's kind of it could be It could be understood as like the last meal, your last meal of the day, right? Or if you are more, ex like if you want to go like an existential, with an existential answer, <laughs> so you can like the, the last meal of your life, right? What food would you choose for your last meal? Laura, would you like to answer this question? I know Fernanda is at work. You don't have to. You can also answer on the chat. So whoever wants to answer this question, it's welcome to do it. Okay, Gerard, go ahead. So, the question is about what food do I need to choose for a special meal or? For, for a special meal? Not really, no. For your last meal, it could be last meal of the day or last meal of your life. Whatever you prefer to speak about. Ah, uh, okay, okay, I got it, got it. 
La última comida, so, tu última comida, ¿cierto? The last meal for instance if if I if I need to be with God, so what will be my last meal? Mm -hmm. I got it, I got it this question. So my response is okay, some potato chips, rice, and the main ingredient is trot, trot, fish, the fish, uh, the fish that is in one of the lakes, lakes in Colombia, the Tora Lake. So it is known the trout. Trout, trout. Okay, uh, I'm gonna okay, yeah. spell the, yeah. the word T R O U T. T R O U T. Trout, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would like to eat this special food because it is delicious, it is tasty. So, definitely, definitely, I'm gonna choose for my last meal. Wow, that's amazing. You go for fish. Yeah, I was thinking about my choice and I wouldn't, yeah. I haven't been able to make up my mind. I would choose pasta for last meal. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, probably I would use, uh, yeah, probably I would go for it as well. Juan Jose, thank you, Fernanda. What about you, Juan Jose? Yeah, um, I, I, I understand the question, but I, I want a question for this, would you refer the last meal of your life? It could be, it could be the last meal of your life or it could be the last meal of your day, whatever you prefer. <laughs> ah, okay, 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 yeah, interesting. Because I understand that the last meal of the day, but uh -huh. I don't understand which you refer the last meal of the life. <laughs> yeah, like you, you can think about both of them, yeah? Okay. Both are okay. Yeah, like uh, I suppose that the last meal of the day was uh, breakfast, and I breakfast eggs. I had you had eggs for breakfast. Okay, yes. Sorry. You had eggs for breakfast, right? Yeah. Yeah, I also had some eggs, scrambled eggs, for breakfast today. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, uh, your last meal, yeah, the one that you had this morning, that's a good choice, yeah, mm -hmm. wonderful, yeah, that's another way to, to look at that. Thank you, Juan Jose. And uh, anybody else? Alguien más? Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, uh, it was very nice to listen to you, it gives me like an idea of like how we are, where we are, with some, like with the speaking tools, right? So I am going to go to WhatsApp for a sec because I share with you a link, okay, that um, I want us to do for this activity. Well, that is kind of the introduction of one of the topics that we're going to um, have here today, or we're going to learn here in this first unit, yes? So that is what we're going to have today and like a structure, kind of a structure, okay. Okay, that I will share it in a sec. So here. My WhatsApp usually takes some time to update like all of the messages here. It just I'm sure I'm just send it. Can you see the link on WhatsApp or you cannot? Yes, now I can see it. Wonderful. So, Laura, if you're not in WhatsApp, uh, or you have not joined, Laura, are you on WhatsApp already? In case you're not, here's the link, okay? Thanks. Okay. So, well, uh, 
the topic or the topic for this first activity or the topic for the first component of our unit or the first unit if you want to call it like that it's going to be talking about past events right so i'm going to share with you a listening exercise yes and this is how it's going to work uh, if you are not on the website please don't go to the website yet yes okay let's try to work on this exercise as i usually suggest my students to work on a listening exercise so a good way to um, to actually have a better understanding is to take some notes, right? Good. So the first time uh, that we listen to this, I want you to pay attention to the information that you're presented here, and I want you to take notes. Si podemos tomar notas, si si entiendo solamente vocabulario suelto, escribo las expresiones que entienda eh, si entiendo una oración completa, escribo la oración completa tan cercana a lo que escriba ahí, tan literal como lo pueda eh, transcribir, ¿vale? por lo menos una oración eh, si pueden escribir muchas más, pues genial, ¿listo? si no, las expresiones que, eh, que, es, que entiendan ahí, entonces vamos a hacer el listening primero and so the first time you listen and you take notes, okay? So try to just uh, get that, good? Okay. Okay. So let's start, are you ready? Do you have paper and pencil or paper and pen? In your yes. hands? Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm okay. ready. You're ready? Okay, wonderful. Okay, let's start. Listening Lab, Exercise 4. B. Past Tense. 1. Where were you yesterday? 2. He wasn't at home last night. 3. Were the children happy with their gifts? Four, there weren't any problems. Five, do you know where they were? Six, you weren't in school last week. Seven, it was cold this morning. Eight, my students weren't interested in the lesson. Nine. Who was at the door? Ten. Those pineapples were rotten. Okay, wonderful. Good. What do you have? I, I, I have, I have, um, uh, various. Se you ha I have some, you can say some, you can okay. say several, okay, good. Okay, I, I have some, some phrase. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the first one is, we were yesterday, yeah? Uh, y pensaría que es como... Nosotros, ¿dónde estuvimos? Como ayer. Okay. Uh, the next one is, he wasn't at home last night. Okay. This, uh, the next is, there were any problems. Uh, the next is, do you know anything? I don't understand the last part. And the next, uh, me pasó como al contrario, uh, the first part don't understand, and I understand the last part of the phrase, the last week. And uh, three ultimates, I understand. Um, the, this phrase, uh, and translate, but está frío en la mañana, o esta mañana está fría, but I don't remember was in English. Oh, okay, okay, got it. Yeah. And the ultimate uh, was my students 
interesting, the last one. The last and, one. The last one I got. You can say the last one I got. <laughs> okay. And the ultimate phrase, I don't understand because the pronunciation was very right for me. It was, it was rare, like different, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. You got a lot of them, uh, Juan Jose. That was amazing. That is amazing. Okay. Uh, what about the other ones? What do you have? Okay, a similar situation happened to me. A similar situation that happened to my classmate Juan Jose. This is this situation happened to me. So in the first one I understand something like worry yesterday. The second one uh something like home tonight. Just I was I was writing the idea, <laughs> okay. but when I was writing, suddenly I forgot the idea. <laughs> just, yes, it happened. I was able to memorize any words. Yes, it happened. <laughs> like now I remember that you said you are going to take IELTS. You know, like a big part of international tests, like IELTS and TOEFL, is taking notes. So I would suggest that you watch videos with strategies to take notes for IELTS because the listening exercises are a combination of listening and speaking. Sometimes it's listening and writing and sometimes and you will have to take notes for a lot of these exercises. Okay, okay. Yeah. gotcha. Sure, I, I'm going to practice this strategy. Yes. So other yes. other phrases that I was able to understand was the fourth. There were any problems. The number five. You were at school last week. The sixth one was this is school this morning. The oh. number seven oh. students are or are interested in the lesson. Okay. And the number eight, who was in the door? Okay. Anybody yeah, else? those are the phrases that, that I was able to listen. That, that you were able to understand, able to yes? Understand. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, could you repeat this part? that you Please. were you were able to understand you can say these are the ones that i was able to understand okay okay yeah so um such as a friend said i'm making my best effort <laughs> to yes. understand in order to understand the yes, yes. absolutely absolutely Okay, so let's go. Let's see the sentences, and you will have to complete. Uh, well, you only have to complete with was or where, which is like probably uh, the idea here to identify like when we use was or where. Okay. Listening lab exercise four. B. Past tense. One. Where were you yesterday? Two, he wasn't at home last night. Three, were the children happy with their gifts? Four, there weren't any problems. Five, do you know where they were? Six, you weren't in school last week. Seven, it was cold this morning. Eight, my students weren't interested in the lesson. Nine, who was at the door? Ten. Those pineapples were rotten. 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 
okay i like i love this uh pronunciation uh like his pronunciation because it's very it's it's a lot like um, american accent he has an american accent and in terms of english usually you say just the sound t and the sound n for example here i'll say ra rotten 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 right not rotten right but rotten rotten t it's like the sound right good okay so in number one uh you got a lot of them when he sent it out so that was wonderful thank you number one where Where? Where, yes. Okay. Where? Number two. He wasn't. wasn't. He was even at home last night. Okay, let's check it out. He wasn't. Okay, number three. Um, went. When or where? We can, we can. Check it out. Okay. Number four. Warren. Warrant. I, I don't understand this pronunciation. Mm -hmm. he, this pronunciation I confuse with work. Oh, okay, yeah. We will check her out. Okay. So I'm going to write it down on my board so that we don't forget. Okay. Because uh, we can definitely check it out. Okay. Okay, and you say like you confuse that with work. Okay, good. And then we have uh, so in number. Or there weren't any problems. Number five, do you know where they? He wasn't. Okay, any other options? Okay. We say. Okay, Sorry. we're going to see here. Number six. Where? Yeah. Number seven. When I say any other option is like the word, right? Yes, I mean I mean a different words or a different conjugation probably. Okay. Okay. Number seven. It was. It was, yeah. Number eight. It was. Yeah. It was My here. Two. Number eight. Where? We're interested or we're not could be weren't. Okay. Who... Nine. Who was at the door? Uh huh. And finally. Where. Where or weren't? Yeah. Where. So now you can see here the answers. Okay. Oh. Let me know if you have any questions about it. The fourth, yeah, uh, your pronunciation there weren't. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Your pronunciation, I listen to work. Yeah, let's go over that one. We can we can listen to that one again. Three, four. There weren't any problems. Because he, he burned mm -hmm. the Yeah. The okay. E. Yeah, uh, it's very uh, common. You know, like pay attention here because you say I confuse that one with work. Yes. So what yeah. happens in terms of pronunciation here is that they pronounce the sounds of the consonants. So I'm going to say, for example, if we say, I'm going to write it down here. Weren't. Yes. And I'm going to write down here work. Okay. Uh, so here in this one, weren't 
right? So what they do is that they pronounce the wo, right? And uh -huh. then they would say earned, earned. You see? Oh. So this one is not going to be pronounced. Okay. It happens the same when you say, for example, uh, impossible or possible, right? So usually we say bol at the end because it's kind of easier for Spanish speakers to say bol, impossible, pero realmente es uh, bol, bol, bol. Es el sonido, bl, bol, bol. O sea que si yo paso R, hago los sonidos. Earned, 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 the weren't, weren't. Weren't, okay. Good, that's it. The same with work, work, we say wo. Aquí hay una letra que se llama schwa, que quisiera poder poner el simbolito aquí, porque es diferente. Schwa. Give me a second, sorry. So that I know that this is too, I mean, it's too uh, specific. Like, it's very specific for me because I'm an English teacher, right? You, you, don't, you don't have to know this. It's just, you don't have to know this. Okay? <laughs> you, don't, you don't really have to know it. Okay? But I, I, I have a question. What is the difference in pronunciation with weren't? with other uh, word that like sound similar with uh, yeah. word, o sea, como de malo, como de uh, word. Ok, wrong. Como, exacto, como incorrecto. Mm -hmm. What is the difference in the word and wrong in pronunciation? You, you say it again, come on. Say the pronunciation for this one and say the pronunciation for this one. Oh, uh, the pronunciation for first one is weren't. Mm -hmm. And the pronunciation for second one is wrong. Wrong, wrong. It's not like wrong, but it's wrong. It's más R que W. Okay. Oh, okay. That's wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, okay. okay. Lo mismo pasa con el right y right, es lo mismo, ¿no? O sea, yo digo right y digo right y es la misma pronunciación, ¿ok? Right, right, ¿ok? Ok, in the context that's... Exactly. Ok. Yeah. This one, the sound, esto, esto que es una vocal del inglés, bueno, el inglés tiene varias vocales, ¿ok? Muchas más que el español, ¿ok? Aquí él me lo está corrigiendo, pero bueno, es, es solamente la pronunciación lo que yo les estoy dando aquí un poquito. Okay. So, it was like work, work, work. No es work. o, sino oh. que es, uh, es esa apertura mínima de la boca, mínima, y yo digo uh, work. Como uh. <laughs> okay. so, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, ese es el sonido, y ese es un sonido muy común del inglés. ¿Cierto? Eh, impossible. Entonces aquí no es possible, sino que también aquí es una, como esta E al revés, que es ese sonido que es uh, impossible. Uh, uh. Okay. Yeah. Es un sonido que hace parte del inglés, muy común del inglés. Aquí sería work, work, work. Okay. Ahí, ahí se ensaya bastante y uno le, le va agarrando como el hilo. Okay. Thanks. Okay, my pleasure. Okay, good. Uh, anything else that probably was not clear here? Um, I have a, yeah, I have a question. For instance, in this word, work, um, word, this situation, or is this situation happening in British English? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like with British, it's a little bit different. Uh, probably not exactly the same, but when we, when you speak in British English, they'll say, um, they, they um, 
extend or elongate the the sounds of the vowels you know like they wouldn't say car but they would say car like es, se alarga la vocal a veces no uh it was it well, wasn't it would it wouldn't well, well like well, they, they have a well, different well, accent i'm not very good with british accent to to actually imitate it but they definitely have uh Probably the same situations, but not with the specific same words. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm talking about this because when I listened to British people, so I noticed this, this kind of situation, the sounds, and especially in the letter R. Yeah. So it's... He, this, they this people, it. they omit it. This people wrote this letter and just I say, what? What's going on here? Yeah, for example, they who was at the door? So they wouldn't say who was at the door, but who was at the door? No van a hacer la aire aquí, por ejemplo. Creo que es con las finales. Do you know where we were? Yeah. Por ejemplo, aquí no dirían where, dirían where. Right? Sería como algo así. Okay? I'm not very good at imitating their pronunciation, but I am familiar in terms of listening. So, like, when I listen to that, I say, oh, I got it. And I can switch to understanding that pretty quickly. Yeah. Okay? But, yeah, that is a characteristic of British English, definitely. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, practice, practice. Yeah, practice <laughs> makes <laughs> makes life. Yeah. Okay, Juanjo, do you have a question? Yeah. Uh, the 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 last question that I have is, uh, what is the difference in grammarly uh, between when and where? When and where? Because you put in the trip that was a when or was a where? Yeah, it depends on the context. Definitely yeah, it depends yeah, it on is. the context, you see? So for example here, uh, aquí en esta, cierto? Si yo digo when... Your microphone up. Okay, far okay. So, thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> I was speaking and you were not listening. <laughs> so let's let's do it here. Like I have the questions you were you you told me before here. So let's let's check it out here for a sec. I'm going to move this a little bit here and this one here. So pay attention here and we're we're going to pay attention to the meaning. Meaning is essential here, you see? Because we're going to say um, here. If I write down when, and this is a difference, and I write down the same one, but I'm going to say where. So pay attention to the pronunciation, you see? Mira que aquí ya me bota error. Cuando yo digo when, when the children are happy with their gifts, estoy diciendo cuando los niños felices con sus regalos, ¿sí? Yes, 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 yes. I, 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 I think that when and where does equals or equivalent. Not really. A where is donde. Yeah, and when is. Cuando. When? Uh -huh. Tiempo, okay. tiempo, lugar. When it's going to refer to time. When are you going to start your business? When are you planning to travel? When it's uh, when it's going to uh, be the game, right? Okay. Uh, but where she is location where what are you now where it's the event going to take place where um where do you live right yeah y aquí en estas dos en la primera y en la tercera queda un poco sin sentido dónde están o dónde estaban sí si quiero hacer una pregunta me falta ahí como algo no yeah. when when where the children happy with their cuando estuvieron ellos felices suena como reclamo <laughs> ok so <laughs> it's, the meaning is going to change where where were the children ok donde estuvieron ellos felices where were en cambio aquí el where es, estaban o no estaban right so it depends on the context it depends on the, like the meaning 
pay attention to the meaning. A veces el buen solito y el where solito nos puede dejar esto así como colgado, ¿no? Como que algo no se entiende bien, ¿ok? So, it's important to identify the action. Where is the action here? Okay, okay. yeah. The, in, in this case, in the third, where, that's no it's donde, sino estuvieron. Exactly. Okay. You see? Be. Yeah. When, okay. si yo digo when solito, estoy diciendo donde los niños, aquí estaría diciendo cuando, perdón, aquí cuando, aquí donde, pero me falta como una acción, donde estaban, donde están, donde estuvieron. Ok, ya. Yeah. ¿Sí? Ok. Yeah. Ok. Ok, wonderful. Ok, great. Uh, before we continue, I am going to, like, we don't have a lot of time left. So I am going to show uh, in this last 10 minutes, like the, the route again to find the activities for the people that probably was not yesterday in class as I, like there was a mistake and I didn't uh, record the second part of the class that we had yesterday where I explained how to get into the, uh, <laughs> into the activity. So I'm going to explain that now. I'm going to repeat that again. Uh, it happens usually during the first week that we, we need to go over that explanation several times because I know that some people uh, are going to attend the classes uh, in different times. Uh, not everybody is going to be at the same time every day or every single class. Okay. So uh, thank you for participating and thank you for all of your questions and paying attention. And, you know, like it's, it's really nice when uh, I find... Uh, people who want to participate. <laughs> okay, so uh, now I am going to uh, share the screen to show you the route or to see the activities. Okay, so when we are in Territorium, right, uh, so we go to the program, you can click here and it's going to show you something like this, right? Ir al curso. Or you can just click, uh, or you can just click in the name, right? O pueden dar click directamente en el nombre también. Let me show you here. That I think it's faster, okay? So you can just click here. English does work right here over the name, and you can see the program right away. So uh, I'm going to move this, I'm going to change the view here so that you can actually see the way you're going to see it, okay? So, um, okay. Yesterday we showed like, this is how you can see the announcements. Si no pueden ver así, so pay attention here, please. If you cannot see it just like this, go to this part where you see mis cursos and you will be able to follow this uh, route, okay? This route, sorry. So here you will go to contenido del curso and in contenido del curso you will be able to see a new tab, okay? A new tab is going to be open and then you will be able to see here initial activities and in initial activities you click here again and then you will be able to see uh, these uh, slides or pages whatever you want to call them so we have three activities three initial activities that is to update personal data right and a diagnostic of uh, prior knowledge and also the social forum, right? So to navigate, you will move around with these arrows, okay? And you can see here two out of four. So this is the number of the page, right? In this page or on this page, you will be able to see uh, like the instructions on how to update your your personal information in Sena Sofia Plus, okay? So click here. Aquí voy a hacer una aclaración en español. Este paso de actualizar datos en Sena Sofia Plus es importante 
para, precisamente para eh, verificar que no tenemos problemas en, en que nuestro nombre o apellido estén mal escritos, que el número de la cédula o el número del documento de identidad sí corresponda, puede ser tarjeta de identidad, sí corresponda al número que aparece en mi documento de identidad. Cuando hay ese tipo de errores, me deben escribir un correo electrónico a M. Narváez G. para que yo lo pueda reenviar a la agente GAE y ella nos puede hacer el favor de cambiar los datos como un tipo de documento, número de documento, nombres y apellidos. Eso se debe hacer en las dos primeras semanas del curso. Si no lo hacen en esas dos primeras semanas, entonces después no se va a poder modificar. Importantísimo, por favor, tenerlo en cuenta, porque el SENA, eh, debido a que siempre invita a hacer esta actualización de datos personales en SENA Sofía Plus, entonces eh, se libera de la responsabilidad de estar actualizando datos como nombres y apellidos porque realmente es una, es una responsabilidad de cada persona. ¿no? Si yo veo que no están bien escritos mis datos principales como nombre, apellidos, números de documento, entonces es importante hacer el cambio porque si no el documento que se, que se genere como certificado de este curso pues no va a tener mucha validez, ¿cierto? Bueno, importantísimo eso, no se les olvide que me pueden enviar un correo a mnarvaezg.edu.co y con mucho gusto hacemos los cambios, si son esos datos, si son datos como número de teléfono, eh, correo electrónico, esos son datos que ustedes sí deben actualizar en caso de que requiera actualización, ¿vale? Uh, so, a clear, like, a very quick clarification in Spanish, because it's, it's important, okay. So, here. So, um, then we have the diagnostic of uh, prior knowledge and you can click here and when you click here on ver sondeo, you will be able to start the, the quiz, okay? There are like seven questions and 18 questions, sorry, uh, related to English to see how you're doing, uh, okay? Then, if, when you finish, right, you can start, you can click start, right? And when you complete it or when you finish, uh, you can go back to initial activities, to the link again. And then you will be able to go to the social forum on page number four. Pay attention here. I'm moving or navigating with these arrows. Page number four. Navego aquí con estas flechitas. Y voy a la página cuatro. Foro social. Y para ver el foro, doy clic aquí en ver foro. Se va a abrir una pestaña nueva, a new tab is going, to, well, is going to be opened, and you will be able to see two forms, okay? One, it's for questions and concerns, okay? Dudas e inquietudes, questions and concerns, and the other one is for introductions. That is the social forums. To participate, you click here on responder, right? And then you will participate. I have some people that have already participated, I have already replied to some of you. You can definitely add your picture if you want to. And you can click here. Yes. Pueden dar clic aquí. Eh, para hacer cualquier cambio de formato, no tienen que hacerlo. Si no lo hacen, pues igual escriben el texto aquí, su presentación, y dan clic en responder. Y ya queda enviado. Okay. And this is to interact, to get to know other people. You can go over, read. The, the introductions of your partners or classmates and uh, you can also reply if you want to like you can also uh, make comments here to uh, the contributions or introductions of your uh, of the other uh, learners or classmates okay and uh, you can go back se aparecen las pestañitas en la parte superior vuelvo a la pestañita you can go back to this main menu, right? And then you will be able to see the learning guides. Okay, esta es la parte de contenido del curso. Entonces ayer explicamos cosas como que vamos a tener tres clases semanales, ¿sí? Eh, generalmente van a ser lunes y miércoles, 8 y 15, las, de, las del grupo de nivel 4. Y hay otra que van a ser eh, de martes y jueves, también en el horario de la noche, y hay otro grupo que también tengo en el horario de la noche, eh, o sea, la idea es repartir un poco los horarios para todos los grupos en algún momento en la noche, 
okay? So that is kind of the idea with these online meetings, okay? Con estas sesiones en línea, okay? Las que están fijas, dime, Fernando. Eh, una pregunta, esto, la clase de este grupo, uh -huh. eh, con este código o con este ID de ficha es los lunes y los miércoles. A las 8 y 15, sí. Oh, y es, eh, tengo unos grupos que están, o sea, tengo unos grupos que varían el horario cada, cada semana más o menos. Son grupos que no, no duran tanto como estos cursos. Entonces, a veces tengo disponible los jueves y a veces los viernes, pero va a ser más o menos hasta misma hora, ¿no? A las 11 de la mañana. Si eh, no pueden asistir a esa clase de la mañana, pues yo realmente entiendo, por eso siempre queda la grabación. Yo trato de que sean en la noche, pero bueno, también hay personas que trabajan en la noche que, que piden a veces el horario en la mañana, ¿ok? Y aprovecho también para decirles que hay un grupo de nivel 3 en la mañana, que es de estos grupos que no dura tanto, aquí haciendo como publicidad. <risa> eh, son gratuitos igual porque son del SENA, eh, duran un poco menos, pero también tienen tres clases, este, este sí va a ser en un horario de la mañana para nivel 3. Si saben de alguien que, que requiera esto, pues yo con mucho gusto les comparto ahí un enlace eh, en caso de que tengan personas que estén interesadas. Ok, so good. Ok, so now uh, we're going to move to this one. This is going to be the content. Este es el contenido. We have content here, like formative content. So we have three links that we need to explore. So my invitation is for you to explore these links before you go over the activities, estas sí son actividades calificables las que vamos a ver en este enlace, actividad de aprendizaje 1, aquí aparecen tres actividades calificables y actividad de aprendizaje 2, que es eh, la última actividad calificable que eh, va a estar disponible hasta el 4 de octubre. ¿sí? Es un video presentación contando una anécdota personal, vamos a a poner ciertas características, es importante que en esa última actividad ustedes se vean en el video cuando están hablando y en esta actividad son cuatro evidencias en todo el curso, una por semana ¿okay? y la primera que vamos a hacer es esta que se llama línea de tiempo situaciones pasadas, es a timeline you will be able to click here, right? aquí voy a dar clic aquí para ver el, eh, el documento donde me, me dan como una idea de cómo hacer esa línea de tiempo y aquí en esta veo el documento de evaluación o sea que aquí me dicen ¿qué Pero es lo que tengo que una, una pregunta ya nos vamos a ir de la sí, oficina sí, esto, yo estoy terminando esas actividades, ¿no? ah, qué pena, esas actividades eh, digamos cada una de las actividades tiene como una fecha límite para entregar es que bueno yo estoy ocupada con otro curso también entonces me da miedo pues incumplir de pronto con una de las actividades si tienen límite de plazo porque de pronto yo podría subirlas todo por ahí a finales de, de, de septiembre ok sí todas las, las actividades tienen un límite de plazo por ejemplo esto está hasta el 22 de septiembre sí pero todas las actividades tienen eh, la posibilidad de hacer entregas tardías es decir que pueden enviarlas máximo hasta el 3 de octubre vale Ah, perfecto, perfecto. La única que bueno. hasta el 4 es esta, la del video, ¿vale? Ok, teacher. Thank you so much. Bye, bye. Me bye, voy, bye. que me dejar. Okay. <risa> ok, bye, bye. Bueno, les comentaba que esta es la última, esta es la primera, perdón, que vamos a desarrollar. Les sugeriría que vean este componente antes de, de desarrollarla para que tengan más vocabulario. Aquí, en este componente, hay muchas actividades. Si yo doy clic aquí, uh, Aquí donde dice acceder al recurso educativo, pues me va a mostrar otra página ¿sí? que tiene estos temas y cada tema tiene contenidos y actividades. Eh, también vienen con la pronunciación, muchos ejemplos de los que están aquí, creo que casi todos. Entonces son, son expresiones. Hoy empezamos a ver estas con un listening exercise, right? Eh, that's it, ok. Aquí es donde pueden acceder al contenido del curso. Okay, thank you everybody for being here and thank you uh, Gerard and Juan Jose for staying at, at, until the end of the class. <laughs> okay. Really appreciate it. Thank okay. you, sister. Thank you, teacher Maria. I'm deeply grateful for this class. You're the best. Well, thank you for You're... being here. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for all.
you are a good professor. <laughs> Thank you. That's very nice. Very, uh, it's encouraging. I really appreciate you saying that. Okay. So see you uh, on Monday, right? Enjoy your weekend uh, and see you on Monday. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, teacher. See you soon.